blessed, we are gifted. Oko State will never be the same for Oko State. So to see that Oko State that will be developed. The resuscitation of the healthcare sector in Ogun State is one of Senator Ibikunle Amusen's core priorities. From the upgrading of existing infrastructure, recruitment of qualified staff, training of personnel, procurement and distribution of drugs and equipment to improved immunization services, a revamped school health service and a modern ambulance system, no part of the health sector has remained untouched since the inauguration of this administration in May 2011. Your, your administration has five cardinal programs, um, which is aimed at the welfare, the prosperity, and security of the citizenry and the state. We talked about education. Mm, health is the next one. Let's look at health. Okay. In the area of health again, when we came, how? Look at our population. Even now we are near 7 million, we are about 7.1 now million people in Ogo State. About. Indeed, and is Ogo State in the whole of Nigeria. Ogo State is the only state that monthly we have this artificial population. Monthly we have about 10 million. When Redeem does there every month, everybody, you see migration of people, everybody coming to Redeem. Mountain of Fire, the same thing. Naswa, the same thing. Winner Shaful, the same thing. Deeper Life, the same thing. Every. So, we are the only state. We have this artificial provision. They will move in. They will move out. When they are having the yearly something, ah, sometimes we will take about 20 million. Everybody is here. So, so, this is a state with that kind of population that will have less than 50 doctors. You know there is a problem. Immediately. Problem. All our primary health care centers. Because again, while we were putting our thoughts on paper, we were told that um, about Likoye, Professor Likoye, that's a good of memory. And indeed, I've now been better informed that uh, indeed uh, Dr. Maja could be a pleasant memory based on part two. It has been demonstrated that the best way of tackling health challenges is to go back to the basis where the masses are. You take the burden off all the states and general hospitals. Once you make sure that your primary health centers are very active and functional. So when we realize that we have 236 works in the United States, we now ask ourselves how many of these primary health care centers are functional? Uh, it's safe to say that a lot of the early work involved um, filling in some of the significant gaps that have developed because of a long period of underinvestment in the state. Uh, it took about a decade for it to deteriorate to the level at which we met things. Uh, and probably the first and most urgent thing that needed to be done, and uh, the governor uh, asked us to do, was to restore to some level of some same level, the manpower in the healthcare sector. Um, when we arrived, people would often get to a health facility, find that there was no uh, qualified healthcare worker there, or those that were there were so few on the ground that they had to wait for a very long time before they could get any uh, care. The 426 primary health care centers in the state have received a lot of attention in terms of rehabilitation procurement and installation of hospital equipment and other hospital needs like boreholes, laboratory and diagnostic facilities as well as backup power supply. Now we now realize that we need to modernize of course our tools, there are modern tools, modern equipment, modern way of doing this. Even those are hospitals that we have. Some of them have been built before I was born. 
you don't have OMMR, all those equipment, all those machines, scanning things, they don't have that. Even the way we do ultrasound machine, how you will build the place, is not the way it was built then. So, what did we do? We, we, we have life in that stress. We now realize that, wait a minute, aside from the primary healthcare center that we are doing, let us do a medium sized hospital in all our nine federal constituencies. Again, we have started, we have finished work completely. We are going again, going ahead with the other nine. And in all our three senatorial districts, we want to have what I call specialist hospital, state of the art, in all our senator, each of our senatorial districts, three. But we cannot do that. We are not saying that as we are running around to build new walls, those who are there must be maintained, must be renovated. We run around, we turn some of them. Look at our teaching hospital, the only teaching hospital that we have. It was in a condition that is, in fact, a glorified, probably a clinic, really. Nothing is there. Indeed, we have issues with the practitioners there. They were not happy with us. But now they were with God, we are happy with us. We cleared all their backlog. And we are improving on what is happening there. No light, no water. The condition there is terrible. So we have changed all of those. Indeed, as we speak now, if you look at uh, the one we did, and I will encourage you to go and see, is in a small way, is as good as it gets. The governor also um, invested in uh, equipment. For example, uh, one of the things that hit the news was when we took five container loads, delivery of five container loads of equipment uh, from abroad. The equivalent of about 20 million, uh, uh, sorry, the, the equivalent of about two million dollars uh, 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 in terms of if we went out and bought this equipment off the shelf, but we liaise with a charity abroad and we were able to make the money go so much further in putting this uh, equipment and this was distributed around all the general hospitals. So that's been, I think, one success story, bringing the general hospitals uh, up to a higher standard of performance and staffing. Uh, there's still a ways to go and one of the things the governor wants to do is to uh, now embark on a range uh, of refurbishments of the actual the buildings and the infrastructure around the hospital. But what he did was the money that we had put aside for that activity, we decided to, although the hospitals were in need of, of, of it, we looked at the sector and realized that there's some areas that are traditionally neglected and have been neglected for even longer than normal. Uh, talking about the psychi community psychiatric center, dental center. So uh, we uh, have refurbished all the main the five dental centers uh, in, in the state up to a modern standard and put new equipment into them. And um, uh, you know, if you don't have problems with your teeth, you will not realize how important a dental center is. But when you do, you will uh, be very uh, grateful you know, to the governor that uh, this uh, finally had some attention paid to them. So we are gradually seeing, I'm focusing for now on the second sector, we are gradually seeing an increase in manpower and improvement in infrastructure and a focus on some of the areas that have been neglected. The administration has also taken it upon itself to create a citizenry with a high level of health awareness and knowledge. Various types of awareness campaigns and jingles are currently ongoing, especially on local state-owned media platforms. Medical personnel are also constantly being trained on how to screen patients correctly as well as cancel them. Over 1,200 health workers have been employed by the Ogun State Hospitals Management Board. The first thing uh, we did was set about employing into the Hospital Management Board, that's our secondary sector. Uh, the General Hospital was to employ uh, initially about 780 staff of all cadres, which gives you an idea, because that wasn't actually everything we needed, so it gives you an idea of how low things had gone if you can employ nearly 800 people and still uh, be you know maybe only halfway to what you need to even just to get to the bare minimum levels and since then uh, it's the total number who have been employed is well over 1200 um, that is net increase and we're talking about replacing people who have gone uh, from the system for one reason or another so 
that put in place, I think, um, a, a good foundation. Uh, apart from investing in people, of course, you have to invest in uh, looking at how they're deployed, improve the, uh, the deployment of the healthcare workers, restore incentives for them to uh, work um, in, in uh, rural areas. Um, worked very hard to uh, um, sort out a lot of the problems that were causing industrial discontent. If you remember, the states, uh, in fact, the teaching hospital, I think they were out on strike for over nine months uh, prior to just coming in. Uh, I think it's a testament to the governor's uh, efforts to uh, build a, a rapport with the healthcare workers and his instructions for us to keep maintaining our good relations that we had very few strikes and most of the strikes that there were were actually national strikes. In terms of a strike at the level of the state level, I think compared to what went before, it's been a fantastic um, story of labor relations. Uh, of course, it's not all been smooth sailing, especially many of the things that were hanging over us took time to, to resolve arrears of payment that were owed. Uh, hundreds of millions were paid in terms of uh, salary arrears and allowances and things like that, but thankfully those have also been cleared. same vein, the administration has been very proactive in its fight against various diseases such as HIV AIDS, malaria as well as some non-communicable diseases such as cancer, hypertension and diabetes. Infants and children's health have not been overlooked in all these and a testament to this is the fact that the state has remained polio free since the second quarter of 2009. In addition, over 85% routine immunization coverage was achieved for children aged 0 to 11 months as at the second quarter of 2012, while over 700,000 children aged between 6 and 59 months have benefited from vitamin A supplementation which boosts the immunity to childhood illnesses. One of the great achievements uh, the government has enabled us is very early on realize that we are not performing the area of routine immunization, otherwise people will sit at home, they will just um, go to the hospital. So what we did is we made sure we fixed, uh, we fixed up our, our logistics for providing vaccines. We were lucky to get the new vaccine. We were one of the states that they looked at our, our, our uh, immunization system and they realized that we could qualify for this brand new vaccine that has five instead of three uh, antigens and it protects the children against more diseases. And the, we were able to access that new vaccine. We revamped our uh, immunization, routine immunization system, and we were able to go from under 70 to over 100% in terms of immunization coverage. And that, I think, is it's not a very visible thing. So unless you talk about it, people won't know about it. But the truth is that hundreds of thousands of more children are now protected against childhood killer diseases. They'll grow up healthy, they'll grow up without having to face some of these problems, you know, like measles, polio, and what have you, because the immunization system is now working. The renewed boost experienced in Ogun State's much improved healthcare system is also reflected in the increase of safe pregnancies resulting in equally healthy babies. There has also been an increase in the number of pregnant women assessing antenatal care, especially with the provision of the conditional cash transfer scheme which allows impoverished expectant mothers access transport money to attend antenatal care, mama kits, child care and nutrition trainings. Also, free telephones are provided for these pregnant women to contact midwives in case of problems during pregnancy. This laudable program is still ongoing as the state targets 1,500 in three local government areas for the first phase of the program. In addition, there is also free malaria preventive treatment for all pregnant women attending antenatal clinics at government facilities. 
The highly intellectual administration led by Senator Ibikunle Amosun realizes that to effectively run an efficient healthcare system, accurate health statistics and database is of utmost necessity. Putting this into consideration, the state has embraced the introduction of the latest version of the National Health Management Information System. Officers are regularly trained on how to successfully use the system. The state has also inaugurated a health research working group and a health research ethics committee. These two groups will essentially foster increased research into critical health care areas in the state. What is Bomaru? Bomaru, we just designed it as like a conditional grant scheme where pregnant women are encouraged to call for their antenatal checks. So each time they call, we give them money. Indeed, we buy phone for them, we load the phone for them. So you will, you will do six antenatal and four postnatal. The same way in England, in anywhere where, where you have your baby, midwife, you come and visit you, we were doing it for them. And we are encouraging them to come to the hospital. And when they have this, their baby, we give them the what we call mama kit. All that they will need, preliminary things that they will need for their babies, we give them. That is a huge success. But the problem is that we do not have enough funds to expand it the way we would have loved. But one good thing came out of that. Ever since we've started, we have not loved the child and the mother. So wishing is if we have the we have the dog, we will stop all this child the uh, we will stop it. But we do not have unlimited access to fund. Much as we would have loved to do, we are curtailed. So because of that, we went back to drawing board again. 